Um, just to, before I sort of look at the chart in a little bit more detail, I'll just answer a couple of questions. Uh, someone asked if you're on MT4 and will MT5 give you the flexibility of Ninja Trader only to the extent that you will have more time frames on MT5, but they are just time based. Um, you won't have tick charts and you won't have second charts on MT5, but you certainly have a much wider choice in terms of the minutes charts. Those of you who are on MT4 will know there are, you know, you, you, you are restricted to whatever the platform offers. Um, that's so, so you'd have to go to a platform such as Ninja Trader, and we will be having Trade Station coming up soon. If you want to trade futures and and, the, and have the VIX, uh, you can trade a version of uh, the, the futures. It's it's a synthetic. Uh, uh, con it's not the actual futures contract on uh, MT, most. I think MT4 and MT5. In fact, I've still I've got some here. So if you just if I just bring it up here, very I've got this um, workspace called Indices. In fact, this is the this is the FTSE 100. The, it's called the UK 100 Cash. Um, because brokers know that um, you know traders like to have access to all sorts of markets these days, uh, even forex traders. So that's the US 30 cash here, which is the equivalent of the Dow Jones. Uh, the, the values we've pretty much uh, the same they will they will track the the cash and the futures market so you can trade these other markets on a platform such as mt5 but if you want the actual futures themselves then you will have to have a specialist broker um, and, and a, a special um, uh, and a platform that offers the actual contracts themselves the contracts that david was uh, which is the e-mini version of the futures a contract ninja uh, trade station th those are the two big big platforms that our indicators are optimized for uh, but there are lots of other um, uh, platforms and brokers out there and with regard to the recording yep uh, uh, we work on it uh, pretty much uh, straight away after the the session is over and it's just how quickly david can can do the editing uh, what we do what we're trying to do is chop these up into smaller sections rather than have the whole i think we'd be going almost an hour and we were finding that to be honest most people don't watch the whole hour which is a shame because there's there's obviously lots to say and uh, so we thought well if we chop them into smaller into smaller sections it might make it um yeah, make it easier if you like um and uh, rory i don't know the question is what's the renko showing is that were you on some charts david you on some time charts yeah um what i'll do is i'll i'll pass that back to david he's just uh is that okay um uh, if uh, if that's uh, if 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 that's okay, the dollar shortage will increase uh, interest rates at the moment. I really won't worry too much. It's nothing to do with interest rates. The dollar shortage is a liquidity problem. It's just that it's uh, everything. The dollar is the currency that really lubricates the financial, the international trade and markets. People borrow in dollars. They have dollar denominated debt. And when that debt has to be paid back, they have to go and buy dollars. And that pushes up the value of dollars. And this is also part of the reason why, not this time, but the time uh, the previous week when the Fed stepped in and um, they had to uh, make lots and lots of dollars available available because if you have a crunch in this in in this in these transactions and there aren't enough dollars then you are really really going to cause some serious damage to the global economy it's been damage is being caused obviously by the this medical crisis that we have at the moment but the dollar liquidity the, the dollar is what it is it's the currency of first reserve it's uh, it's a very powerful cu currency you may not agree with you know that the dollar should have all this power with power comes responsibility but that's a that's a discussion for another time everything is um priced in dollars commodities are priced in dollars and whilst before all this blew up um, people, you know, the U Europeans, the Chinese were they were trying to move away from the dependence of the global economy on the US dollar, but really they haven't been able to do it yet. No one wants yuans, and I'm not sure they even want euros at the moment. But again, that's a discussion for a future, uh, uh, for another day, as it were. Just one on that sell-off when what the Renko and time chart she was showing at the start 
would have been showing for that to see. Right. I think, Rory, what I'll do is, can I just carry, just do what I want to do here, and then I'll pass back to it. It's going to take me a few minutes, David. Is that okay? Right. What I've pulled up here, we're talking about um, about Wyckoff, and um, it was just a really nice example. This is the pound yen. When I said to you that one of uh, there are these three laws that uh, that Wyckoff has come up with, and one of them is the supply and demand law, and how which is accumulation, distribution, and points of reversal. Where we had a really nice point of reversal based up here for the pound yen, based on a two bar reversal. If you overlaid that on that you end up, would end up with a shooting start, which actually started this move lower for this pair. But look at the, and also look at the volume underneath that move, which is great. That move, that volume is confirming to us that that is a valid move. So that is VPA 101. Then the move comes to a pause as it does. It actually comes, support and resistance is a hugely important element of VPA. It's one of the five pillars of VPA. And that's support and resistance based on price, but also support and resistance on volume. This resistance up here, although these two candles pushed up through it, this is a volume paste based resistance based on the histogram here from the volume point of control which we're not going to come not going to talk too much about it today but just uh, just uh, um, um, you know just make a note that support and resistance how we look at support and resistance not just price based but also volume based so you get two bar uh, two bar above so yes it did push slightly through but support and resistance lines zones you have to be a little bit flexible with them the, the chart pattern actually confirmed that there would be some kind of reversal that reversal we know is a genuine move why because the volume is going higher then we have an attempt so let's take that as now as the start of a primary trend that was the primary trend higher we did actually get a reversal Reversal. This, as it subsequently turned out, it wasn't just a pullback from the trend high. It was actually a, a reversal from primary to primary. Then it bumps along sideways, and we look at the volume underneath that candle. That candle volume really not very supportive. It's not going to go very far. Then it hits the resistance again. Where here we have price-based resistance and volume-based resistance. Then we have this candle, which is really this volume bar and this candle, which is really interesting. Look at this spread of this candle. It's a very Washed candle. Look at the volume underneath it. Effort and result. That is not um, the, um, that is not um, that is not genuine. It's not a genuine. Uh, um, not genuine. It's not, what's the word I'm trying to think of, David? It's not anomalous. It's um, it's uh, in. It's incongruous. What am I trying to think of? I can't think of the word. But essentially, for that kind of volume. And that kind of price spread, you would have expected that to go much, much higher. It hasn't. So it tells us that this price, the the that much of effort, that's what this much effort should have produced a much better result. It didn't, it hasn't, and it also hasn't because it's hit this important. Uh, resistance area here then we have some more selling in we have a little bit more of sideways then we have this candle with a reasonable amount of volume underneath it and we know we have weakness again how many times does the price actually hit or attempt to go through these this level and the more times it tries to hit it on a price-based basis this line I don't know if you can see it it's a little sort of uh, hatched blue line that will get thicker and thicker in fact the red line under here uh, you can see that that's been uh, that is a strong line of support but what we then have we have a down candle with a reasonable amount of volume we then hit the volume point of control which is where the the uh, for the time being uh, the the uh, there is balance between the buyers and the sellers and if you like there's a little bit of uh, of congestion and the most important uh, uh, if you like candle and volume here is this one here you've got a pivot I think that's that one isn't it David is that that one there or is that the next one that's the next one down there I can't I can't read my candles but you've got a little you've got a bit of weakness there. But what we want is, sorry, it's this one here. It's the break away from the congestion. What we have is we have a deep candle. There is a wick at the bottom of the candle. I accept that. There's a little bit of price support coming in. But look at the resistance that is now ahead for this candle and look at the volume underneath it. And that tells us this is likely to be a very big move lower. And we start down. Then we come to this candle here. Again, a, a, a lot of effort but not a lot of result, which is telling us that this is 
this trend lower is going to continue. And in fact, if you follow it lower, the uh, price keeps going lower, but look at the volume. It tends to, it is falling away all the time. And what is that is telling you is this move is now coming to an end. So we had a primary trend higher. We had a nice reversal. We had a, a, um, uh, Wyckoff's law of supply and demand, accumulation and distribution, a reversal, uh, a move down, a little bit of sideways congestion because nothing moves uh, in, in a straight line. The volume is telling us whether any of the moves under these candles is genuine or not, and that is the one that is the most telling, if you like, where you have a lot of effort going in for not a lot of, not a lot of results. So we know, yes, there has been an attempt to move higher, but it's really not, you know, not going very far. It hits the resistance and support price-based and volume-based, congests a little bit more. This is the key candle. This is the one that tells us that, you know what, there is going to be some serious selling under here. I know it's got a wick to the bottom of the candle, and there has been, there's always buying coming in because in this, you know, in all markets, there are um, uh, limit orders, you know, scattered around the charts coming in. So, you know, buyers will always be coming in, sellers will, will always co be coming in. But look at the height of this volume bar. It's the highest, it's the highest of this particular section of price action and time. And we know this is coming to an end because the volume is fading away. Then we go back up again and we see the volume rising, um, the price rising. What do we see? We see the volume falling again. But we know we're going to hit some serious resistance at the volume point of control. We've got volume resistance. We've got price-based resistance. So is it any surprise that the, uh, uh, that the, um, uh, the, um, the pair roll over again and now it's going to have another attempt to move higher but the thing we have to be aware of now is the time because it's now quarter past six here in uh, London the only market that is is open at the moment is the US session the deepest liquidity is in uh, uh, in London and Europe so we don't know given that um, you know this this volume is falling because we have to read volume in in the context of the session and for Forex that is hugely important um, and it's got a big big ask if you like to get through this region here the chances are it may simply move sideways for the time being so that really explains as i said um what did i say two of two of the laws beautifully uh the the reversal supply and demand and the effort and and result and it's really the effort and result which keep help to keep you in a move because once you spot those you will you will relax and you think do you know what yeah i can see what's going on but actually this is going to carry on now and of course you would be looking at this in multiple time frames as well right let me just see if there are any questions very quickly fine thank you that, that's lovely fine brilliant and as i said the the indicate all these indicators that we've that you see here we have developed to support the volume price analysis method and the Wyckoff laws as well. Right. Have you answered all the questions or do you need to come back over to you? Brilliant. I'm going to wrap. Shall I wrap up or do you want to come over? I have actually, yes, just very quickly, just to remind you all again. This is where you'll find details of the indicators that are on the charts. It's at quantumtrading.com, as you can see. Uh, MT45, Ninja Trader. We do do trading view. Trading view doesn't have the full set of indicators because it's the um, uh, it's the code, it's the um, the code that the platform uses. Are or indicators um, require a, a little bit more than uh, than the code that is available on trading view. And we are also working on TradeStation as well. We are back tomorrow morning where we are back for Forex for the London session. So I know some of you will be coming along to that. So we will see you then. And then for this session, we're back next week, aren't we, Donny? Yeah, we are. back next week. So thank you so much for coming along. The markets are certainly in a, in a, in well, it's unprecedented to be honest. I think it's a combination of 2008 and probably a great uh, uh, dollop of uh, the Great Depression, which is a bit depressing, but we will see. But the most important thing at the moment is that uh, this uh, this dreadful virus is uh, put under control, and uh, uh, you know uh, we minimise the number of people who uh, we know will sadly 
lose their lives. So, you know, sorry to leave on a on a bit of a down note, but that's just the reality out at the moment. And um, as I said, as um, we as traders, we simply look at the charts and uh, you know we trade what we see. I think more and more people will want to trade in the future because it's a very un the future is always uncertain. But I think there's probably even more uncertainty now. Uh, the world is going to be a very different place in a few months' time. But as I said, the priority at the moment is the is is the medical um, um is the medical situation so take care of, please take care of yourselves uh, stay safe and we will catch you next time